It is a big milestone in improving the relationship between the United States and Cuba. Today, for the first time in five decades, more than that, in fact, the Cuban embassy is open in our nation's capital. Eight on your side is in Washington tonight for this historic occasion. Gene Ramirez is joining us there live tonight. And what a historic day, Gene. You had a front row seat, a new day in post-Cold War relations. Absolutely, Keith. A big uh, historic day here. And actually, there's lots of ties to history as well. I'm going to show you here the Cuban flag that was hoisted up here at about 1030 this morning. That is the same exact flag that flew here back in 1961 when the U uh, Cuban embassy here in Washington was shut down and turned into a Cuban interest section. Right behind me right now, as you can see, these events continue throughout the day. It's been a packed day, and this continues. This is an anti-embargo rally here. These are people who support all these changes. But we We've seen people like them who support this, also protesters who are against it. And then this group of people who have mixed feelings about all of this. One of them has ties to the Tampa area. Growing up in Tampa, uh, I've learned about the culture and everybody. And Craig Shireman relocated from Tampa to Washington, D.C. He wanted to witness a historic occasion he feels very connected to. But to hear the stories and to understand the culture and the struggles the families went through, I think it's uh, very important for Floridians and for Americans to uh, realize this historic day. A flag-raising ceremony at the reopened Cuban embassy in Washington was how the Cuban government ushered in a new era of diplomatic relations with the U.S., non-existent for 54 years. Outside, protesters demanded human rights for Cubans. Secretary of State John Kerry, who met with the Cuban foreign minister, will raise the U.S. flag in Havana August 14th. Eventually, each country will name ambassadors and Cuba could open consulates throughout the U.S. Tampa is probably the favorite right now for the new consulate. But you can't expect that to happen immediately, Keith. As a matter of fact, Assistant Secretary of State Roberta Jacobson, who orchestrated this deal and was present here today, said that we cannot expect any immediate changes. This is just one of many steps that have to be taken as the U.S. and Cuba try to make amends. Back to you, Keith. What a big step it is. Now, you mentioned in your story that the protesters are demanding human rights for Cubans. Others are demanding that the trade embargo remain in place. So there's still a fragile relationship this, uh, that we're building here with Cuba. Are some of the people behind you just totally opposed to this? Well, these are actually supporters that you see behind me. These are people you can see in their signs there. They want an end to the blockade, which is what the people of Cuba call uh, the embargo. There's also pro-socialism signs here uh, in this crowd. Uh, there have been chants for Fidel Castro, for Raul Castro. So people here from all different points of view, that's for sure. But what's really interesting here is you look at this group here that is pro-socialism, pro-Castro. They can express themselves freely here in the United States, but then you have people in Cuba who cannot speak against their own government because they're subject to beatings and to arrests. Keith. And again, you mentioned also our U.S. flag will be going up in Cuba, in Havana. When is that? In August at some point, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, officially right now, the U.S. interest section in Havana is now the U.S. embassy uh, in Havana. That happened at the same time that this became the Cuban embassy here at midnight. But they're waiting for Secretary of State John Kerry to visit uh, Havana to raise that flag. That's happening on August 14th. Gene Ramirez live in Washington, D.C. on this historic night. Thank you, Gene.